Can it be worth it? What am I buying? How do I convince my family that this is a worthwhile purchase? It's time to see what you can expect when you purchase a nice shiny mill scale 94 gallon backyard smoker. Every cook starts with me opening the door, so that seems to be a good place to begin. The door is solid steel with no vents cut in or butterfly wheels. The intent is to control the airflow by opening and closing the door. Standard operating procedure is with the door resting on the hinge. This gives the fire just enough air to burn efficiently and produce good smoke. The website says the firebox is 20 inches in diameter and I measure it to be about 24 inches deep. This puts my ideal wood split length between 12 and 16 inches long. I'm still on the learning curve with regards to starting and managing my coal bed, but I can easily say if something goes wrong, it's because of user error and not the smoker just being finicky. I'll also note that the door opening is not quite big enough to comfortably fit a charcoal chimney in, in my arm inside. So pouring live coals does take some creativity, but that's pretty minor. Besides, I should get better at starting a fire in the pit anyway. One other thought about the door and the firebox. There's a lip at the edge of the firebox that prevents coals from exiting the pit. The safety benefit of this outweighs the con of making shoveling coals out a little less efficient. That nameplate is a part of the smoker. It goes with the overall aesthetic of the smoker and I really dig it. I opted to add on the plancha, also known as a flat top griddle. The plancha is a part of my firebox and there's no removing it to look at the fire below. It measures about 12 by 18 inches. To access the plancha, there's a door on the top of the firebox that you lift up and over the firebox. Generally speaking, visible smoke does not leak from the plancha unless something really wrong is going on with the fire. There are four holes in each corner that allows grease to escape. As you can see, the plancha is welded into the firebox and the firebox is welded directly onto the cooking chamber. Cleaning the plancha is generally easy, but removing the last little piece of crud is nearly impossible. I just use a scraper and knock off the junk. Why did I opt for the plancha? Two words. Reverse sear. Delicious. In all honesty, the first thing I cooked on the flat top was fajitas. It had so much more room than I had on my M Grills M16 and I finally was the fajita chef I envisioned myself to be. Technically, you don't need a plancha if you're just trying to sear off burgers and steaks. Inside the cook chamber, there is a little, nice little shelf about eight inches wide, and it sits over the air exchange section. It's probably the second hottest part of the smoker, and I've put steaks and burgers there, and it was great. You can also put a small water tray there or whatever. Importantly, it's not a waste of space. Because of how hot that section is, it's unlikely that you'd want to smoke there anyway. Which brings me to another important point, hot zones. I did a biscuit test on the smoker when I first got the mill scale. As you can see, the smoker is pretty even across with a little more heat on the entrance and exit points. But really, this smoker is so balanced from a heating and airflow perspective that you won't have to worry as much about rotating food for evenness. It also comes with a tell truth thermometer. I've skipped some important things though. There's one large cooking grate in the chamber and it measures 23 by 36 inches. You can remove the grate, but it does not slide out. So it's a bit of a lift. Grease flows out of drain at the base of the smoker. There's no plug or valve, just a hole. It hasn't really caused me any problem, but yes, smoke does come out of it. I just change out the bucket when the grease gets full. It looks like it's time for me to clean my pit. 
As air exits the pit, it hits the collector, which is nice and large. On the exterior, I'll place my tallow jar on the collector to liquefy it some. It's hot to the touch, warmer than the rest of the exterior of the cook chamber. The smokestack is tall and semi-permanent. I mean, technically I could unbolt it to take the stack down, but I cook on this Iron Chef every weekend, so it'll be a hassle attaching and detaching and storing the smokestack. We have a handle here where we can open and close the smokestack at any position. I'm six foot one, so reaching the top of the stack to grease it isn't much of a problem for me. But the smoker stands over seven foot tall fully assembled, so be advised that there is no shame in getting a step stool to keep rust away. In order to maintain the metal, I use tallow and just wipe it down after each cook. I put about a spoonful or two on my cotton rag and just hit it every piece of metal. It takes a couple of minutes and after five months of use it still looks pretty nice so I'm fine with this routine. Underneath the smoker is a shelf. You can put whatever you want to on this shelf. I store wood on it, but if you have barbecue tools you like to keep around, you can, you can put them under there too. The smoker sits on four eight inch caster wheels. I don't even know if you can upgrade these, but they seem to be working real well for me. Each one rotates 360 degrees and each wheel has its own locking mechanism. This was a monster to move up a ramp with my then 16 year old son, but it won't be moved again until I build the smoker's new home. Dimension wise, the mill scale 94 gallon is about 8 feet wide, 2 feet deep, and 7 feet tall. You will need more space than that, probably add another 2 or more feet to the 8 so that you can easily open the firebox and allow oxygen inside. While this is intended to be an overview and not a critical review, I will say that I have no regrets purchasing this smoker. I don't have any of the other smokers on the market, but I watch tons of YouTube videos on each of those. No, it doesn't have 3 8 inch thick steel. It has quarter inch thick steel. No, I can't get the firebox insulated, but in reality, I live in Ohio and I've been able to cook through Ohio winters on a Weber kettle, so I'm not too concerned about that. But I could not get the aesthetic of the mill scale out of my mind. At the time, I only had to wait a couple of months for it to be built, so all things considered, I'm glad my wife encouraged me to buy the smoker of my dreams so I could stop serving burnt food at the cookout. Well, you made it to the end. You might make it to the end of another one of my videos. Why don't you check one of those out below? Take it easy.